Hello and welcome back to another update as we cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukraine war. We start out here to the west of Bakhmut where we've seen the most significant changes to the front line. The Russians have advanced since the previous update in three different directions. Directly to the west of Bakhmut through the area of Formove and down to Chasovyar. From the south of Ivanivska towards the Ukraine fortifications in the area and to the north of Klyshivka, where the Russians have gained control over the northern flank of the fortifications. Going through each of them, we start out here in the direction of Jesevyar, where the Russians are now storming the Ukrainian trenches and fortifications directly head on here to the west of Formove. The Russians here would be have the objective of pushing towards the eastern parts of Jesevyar across the canal, before moving down south, capturing all of the Ukraine fortifications to the east of the canal and flanking the Ukraine fortifications north of the road, which would allow them to avoid attacking these fortifications head on and moving through the forest areas instead of fighting through the open fields here to the south. Instead, fighting through the railways to the north, where they likely look to enter the forest lines and patches here to the east of Chesavyar, and flank the Ukrainian fortifications by bypassing them and cutting off their supplies. It is reported by Russian forces fighting in this section of the front line that the Ukrainians have significantly increased the amount of FPV drones that they use, and that is actually a very interesting comment. If the use of FPV drones continues to increase, the Ukrainians would at some point be able to hit every single Russian soldier storming when they use these small assault groups to storm the Ukrainian positions. This would allow the Ukrainians to inflict heavy casualties on the Russian assault squads and that would diminish the effectiveness of these small assault units. The current benefits to using these small assault units is to avoid Ukrainian bombardment because the Ukrainians are running low when it comes to their artillery munitions. This allows the Russians to launch these small assault groups without them being a main target and to advance with less casualties than if they were to launch an actual assault, which would be bombarded by Ukrainian artillery. Instead, now that the Ukrainians are rationing, these small assault groups would not be hit. Instead, they're getting hit by the FPV drones, which are increasing in production and is being produced within Ukraine itself. This is one of the main reasons for the Russian airstrikes, these large missile strikes taking place, hitting the Ukrainian industrial complex where they are building these drones, as well as hitting the energy grid to remove the power that allows these companies and industries to function. With this, we see that there is a battle of attrition coming to the production itself, where both sides are hitting the deep strike to hit the production capacity of the FPV drones with the Russians, of course, having hundreds of missiles compared to the Ukrainians having a few to a few tens at most. This gives the Russians a significant advantage when it comes to these deep strike tactics. At the same time, we see here to the south of Ivanivska, the Russians are expanding their zone of control by pushing in a southern direction, while at the same time pushing here to the north of Klyshivka, they may look to connect by the Ukrainian fortifications in control of the areas that aren't well fortified before pushing on to them here in between Ivanivska and Klyshivka. The Russians may look to bypass Klyshivka itself and push through the Ukrainian fortifications in the center by moving through their flank to the north, pushing directly towards it from the east and attacking from the southeast as well, connecting all three, three directions to push to the canal and bypass the Ukrainian fortifications to the south by flanking and cutting off their supplies. What we're currently seeing is that the Russians have started a new offensive following the capture of Ivanivska, where they're looking to gain full control over the east of the canal line, at the very least to the west of Bakhmut and to the south of the Bakhmut direction in the southern flank. Gaining control over these areas would allow the Russians to then move on to the western part of the canal by attacking directions to Pushki towards Chesavyar itself and crossing over at multiple parts to try to gain a foothold and push the Ukrainians away from Bakhmut itself and allowing them to then develop the city for future operations by allowing Bakhmut to be developed as a supply hub for the Russian soldiers operating in the area. We then move further south here to the west of Avdivka where there has been yet another advancement by the Russians. This is yet again another advancement that is away from the Ukrainian fortifications 
The Russians are looking to gain and expand their zone of control here to the north of Fedromaiske and west of Tonenke, where they're looking to attack the Ukrainian fortifications, gain control of them, to then push towards Nitsailova to the south and Omanske directly from the road itself. These attacks are all where the Russians are attempting to go through the road that goes through the west of Tonenke to avoid the main fortifications of the Ukrainians to the north, where they also have the high ground pushing through to the Ukrainian fortifications here by Yasnobrodivka and cutting off the connection between the north and the south here to the west of Avdivka. Moving further south, we see that there is also an advancement to the southwest of Staromayorske. The Russians are here doing some more probing attacks toward the Ukrainian positions here. We previously saw the Russians push towards the southeast of Fotoshina, where they were instantly pushed back because the Ukrainians had active units in the area. Now we are seeing the Russians attacking from the southwest of Sermayorsk, and we may see a similar scenario if the Ukrainians still have active forces in the area. We see that the Russians have been doing probing attacks across the southern front with no significant offensive operations other than towards uh, Robotene and northwest of the village of Vebove. With these advancements, we see that the Russians have closed in further towards the Ukrainian advances here to the south of Orihiv, but this is not the main section where the main fighting is taking place. This is mainly to keep the Ukrainian defenses on the move, as the Russians' main push is was to the west of Avdivka and to the west of Bakhmut, where the Russians have managed to capture Ivanivske and a number of villages here to the west of Avdivka. We see that the Russian advances here west of Bakhmut have been geolocated with this geolocated footage showing Russian advances here to the south of Bohdanivka where the Russians have reached the outskirts of the fortifications. We also have geolocated footage here to the north of Kleshevka where the Russians have managed to gain control over the whole forest patch. And with these advancements we see that the footage that comes every time we see Russian advances here is from Ukrainian FPV drones which again speaks to the amount of Ukrainian FV drones striking across the front. In the direction of Orlivka to the west of Avdivka, we get the first visual confirmation of the full control of Orlivka by Russian forces with this geolocated footage. In terms of the Ukrainian missile strikes towards Crimea and the Russian military docks, it was reported that two ships were hit. However, we have this satellite imagery which shows that the Ukrainians actually missed these ships. Either the missiles were shot right above the ships or the missiles simply missed as the dock itself was hit, but the ships themselves were not. In regards to the upcoming Russian summer offensive, there are two main parts. The first one is the fact that this offensive is going to be a massive one throughout the front. And in preparation for that, the Ukrainians are now grappling with growing troop shortage, as is written by the Wall Street Journal. In this article, the Wall Street Journal mentions how Ukraine desperately needs new troops to hold off a massive Russian offensive. They currently have enough reserves to hold the front line, but if the Russians launch a massive offensive, they will be in a very dire situation. Bills and other laws to expand the conscription in Ukraine is stuck in country's parliament due to demographical issues and political issues. And the Ukrainians' failure of a summer offensive last year ended up undermining Ukrainians' morale and depleted the human resources that were lost in that battle. So with that, we see that the Ukrainians are suffering from a shortage of troops, and this will only grow as the fighting continues and the Ukrainian army is grinded down while the Russian is out conscripting troops for the battles. At the same time, in regards to the massive airstrikes and missile strikes taking place, it is reported that there are, according to Ukrainian sources, the biggest preparation for missile strikes over Ukraine. According to the sources, there are two airports with each seven times TU-95MS, that means a total of 14 to 95 MS, each are capable of holding 8 X-101, 555 or X-55 missiles. So that is a total of 112 missiles. At the same time, it is reported that in a different airfield, 12 TU-22M3 are at that airfield. The, the TU-22M3 can hold either four Kinsel missiles, or up to 10 of other types. With that, there's also an additional report of about 12 MiG-31K in combat readiness. 
This would add up to the largest missile strike since the Russians launched the offensive and it would be above 200 missiles in total, unless the Tu-22M3 are equipped with Kinsels, but that would still add up to a significant amount of Kinsel missiles. This would be the biggest missile strike since the start of the war. All of this adds up to the fact that the Russian offensive is likely closer than summer rather than waiting for the summer itself, as the Russians are preparing with this missile strike for their offensive. And that is going to be where I end off this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe and check out my Patreon.